are getting ready to do a set of videos on how to bend PVC using the PVC bend it. But what I want to do before the boss comes around is do my own. So this is it. I am using a 9 foot Model A by PVC bend it. And right now it's turned on, it's hot, everything is ready to go. So here's how it's done. In the spirit of Hollywood, I have pulled out something from nowhere called PVC pipe. This is blue pipe, but it's just the same as any other PVC. It's no different whatsoever. Schedule 40. And it's cool. So here's how you do it. You put the pipe on the bender. Close the bend station. And wait, it does not take very long, so you just find a way to entertain yourself for a few minutes, like this. Turn the pipe every few seconds to make sure that you don't burn it on one side or the other on the inside and to try to keep producing grill lines on it. If you're doing non-plumbing applications, you don't have to rotate the pipe quite as often because it's not such a big deal if you have a few burn marks on the inside. So for furniture and for that sort of thing, you can almost leave it alone. You don't want to do that or else you will have one liquid side and one solid side and it's just not going to behave for you. But it's not as important to turn it all the time. Now, if you're doing a plumbing application, you want to make sure that you turn this pipe about every 15 seconds through the whole bend process. And it also helps to turn the pipe because then you're going to know when it's actually ready to do what you want to do with it. The best way to do that is by touch. Now originally we were doing a lot of timing, we'd have our timer on and what we noticed is that PVC can actually vary from lot to lot and even from pipe to pipe and plus all of the conditions around you, barometric pressure, humidity, all of those things, ambient temperature, will be changing as the day goes by so that what works for one pipe at 9 a.m. might not work for a different pipe at noon and then by 4 p.m. you're going to have different conditions again and all of these things do come into play while you're bending so it's important to just keep an eye, keep a finger on it and when you feel that it's right you're ready to go Be sure to put your gloves on before you take the pipe out of the bender. The thing is hot. PVC softens at about 220 degrees, which is hot enough to burn you. You don't really need thick, thick gloves because it's not that hot, but you do want some protection for your skin. Even if you have calluses, even if you're a cook and you're used to high temperatures, you still really don't want it. It is not pleasant. This kind of burn sneaks up on you, and the next thing you know, two days later, you have a blister. So this is that rigid pipe that, well, I mean, this, there's no cuts. You see, this is that same pipe. And this bend doesn't actually have a real purpose. I'm not too concerned how it comes out. It's really just to demonstrate what you need to do. And in future installments, we'll definitely get into some applications. Because they, once you can turn a PVC pipe into something like this, it opens up doors. There are a lot of different possibilities for the material that, when it was just that straight thing, you got what you got, but this now is what you make it. So I'm just going to put it down. Okay. Well, that worked. 
one trick that we've found if you have an air compressor available to you in one of these guns is it really helps speed up the cooling process to plug it in. Another method to be found is using a wet sponge, which also works very well, but one thing you need to watch out for is not to get that water on your gloves or make sure you're using waterproof gloves because once you soak the fabric and go back and touch the pipe, it will conduct the heat to your skin much faster. And again, it is not pleasant. That puts you in steam burn territory. So you see where we're at now, it's starting to kind of harden up a bit and it's still got some flexibility. At this point, you could fine tune the bend and we'll get into forming processes and things in the future. This is strictly a pointless bend. The only point is to show how flexible it gets. And in the future, we'll move on to actual practical applications. But you can see it's already considerably harder. And in the next two minutes, this will be as hard as it was originally. And it will completely remember the shape. Once you, If you have a form to drop it into and you make your bend, when you're done, it is equal, it is exactly the same. PVC is a thermoplastic, which means that if you don't heat it up to a point where it's going to destroy it, it's still the same stuff as it was while it was solid, it's just able to move around. And once you're done, once this thing is hardened, it is exactly, exactly the same as it was before we started messing with it. Now, certain things to take into consideration is that this wall thickness did change just a little bit because, you know, you're stretching it out when you do this. And this wall probably got a little bit thicker here too, but these are negligible things. You want to be careful in high pressure applications. You want to make sure and test in a very controlled environment before you go and just take a bent pipe and put 400 PSI inside of it. That could be really dangerous. But at the same time, once it's hardened and once you test the threshold of pressure that it'll tolerate, you're going to find something just as useful as a straight PVC pipe. But now you can get it in places where it couldn't go. You can make it into things that you couldn't make it into before. And you can also take things that you could make before and make them a lot better, make them more professional looking, make them easier, use less cement, use less fittings, use less primer, use less cleaner, and just again, just have a slicker finish when you're all done. Now this right now has fully, fully hardened. It's still, it's just as flexible as a normal PVC pipe is. I wish I had one nearby, but I kind of forgot to do that, but that's it.